Okay, Ingrid, would you just like to come up now? Ingrid's just going to lead us as we pray about our tithes and offerings and, and just share with us for a moment. Good morning, church family. Um, oh, I'm a little bit nervous. Hey. <laughs> um, I just wanted to share something with you um, that the Lord's put on my heart. When um, Pastor Miranda asked me to share this morning, I was trying to come up with excuses of why I couldn't sore throat or anything, anything really. But um, as I was getting ready um, the next morning, I, I just felt this nudge in my spirit and I really sort of started having a conversation with myself, I thought, but it was actually the Holy Spirit that was saying to me, and he said, he said, Ingrid, why don't you want to share? And I said, oh, because I, I haven't been well. And I, I, you know, started telling him. And then he asked me again and he said, Ingrid, why don't you want to share? And, and I said, well, Lord, what am I going to say that they haven't already heard? What am I going to bring? And then I started thinking, well, maybe, maybe I can Google something. Something will come to me and you'll lead me somewhere in Google. And he says to me, Ingrid, haven't I been faithful in your life? And I said, oh, yes. He said, well, why don't you talk about that? And why don't you share a testimony of your life? And so I said, well, Lord, there's just too much. You've been faithful too much in my life. What? I've only got a few minutes. So he said, well, pick one thing. And this is what I'm going to share. So it's going to probably take a few more minutes. But um, as a young family, Jason and I, um, you know, as you would know, there's so much, um, so much that a young family has to do. Mortgage. There's my son. Um, okay, come here. All right, that's all right. That's it. Um, you know, we have a mortgage. We have four children. Um, we have a business that we run. Um, and I remember this one time that Jason came home and he had this worried look on his face, but he didn't say anything to me. And, and anyways, I carried on and I said, what's wrong? What's wrong, babe? Something, that something's up. And he says, oh, no, no, everything's okay because that's what he does. He just makes everything okay for me. But I know him and something was wrong. And so he comes and he says, uh, we need to talk. And I said, all right. So we put the kids to bed. And he says to me, um, we have no money. And I said, okay. No, like the business is really low in finances. And we have rent to pay. We have employees to pay. We have a million things that we needed to pay for. And so... Um, I said, okay. And I said, well, is it bad? Like, I'm sure it'll be, it'll be okay. We have, we have a, you know, reserves. Said, no, no, we don't. It's low. We ha don't have to pay bills next week. And I said, all right. So we do what we do. We put them, to, we, we had the kids in bed and, and we came to, to our knees and we just started just pouring our heart to the Lord and just saying and telling him, telling him, Lord, we have to, pay our employees they need to eat they need to feed their families we need to pay rent we need to pay all of these things that had just were just popping up and we didn't have money in the account to pay that and um we poured out our hearts to the lord that night we we just everything in us was just saying lord you you know it all but he wanted us to connect with him and he wanted us to say give him, give him our problem, give him our burden. And so we did. And, you know, there was many tears and we just, and I remember we, we put on our worship and we were on the floor and we're like, and then we got up and it was, um, it was really strange because it was this peace that sort of came upon us and we couldn't explain it. It's like, okay, well, we'll figure it out. God will figure it out. And, and we went to bed that night and we slept in peace. A couple of days later, Jason calls me and he says, um, there's somebody who wants to 
um, me to go have and quote a job and have go have a look at this job. So he went up to I think it was Sydney somewhere, and um, and he says, oh, he calls me up, really excited. He's like, I think we got it. Oh yeah, that's that's really good, you know. So they're going to pay a deposit, and then an email comes through and says. I'm not just going to pay the deposit, I'm going to pay the whole amount of the job. And that for us was meant that we could pay all our bills, we could, and there was extra left. Like it was a quite a big amount of money at the time. And I just remember thinking to myself, God, you're so good. You're so good. And even when we think there's no way out or we think, oh, you know, this is impossible, oh, I'm going to have to get a loan or I'm going to have to do this or do that. God comes through one way or another. And can I just encourage you that if you are going through anything that, you know, I don't know, but God does. God knows exactly what your needs are. He knows exactly what you're going through, not just financially, but it could be, you know, anything, anything in your family, in your personal life. God knows the details and He knows and He's in it. So as we give this morning, I just wanted to um, encourage you to, to know that when we give or when we, anything we give, whether it be our tithing, whether it would be to help someone who's in need or whether, whatever it is, missions or whatever it is that you are giving, a little amount, a big amount, whatever it is, it's not the amount that we give, but it's actually our heart and our, the, what, God looks at our heart, not if we're giving the little bit that we have or the lot that we have. We are giving from our heart. And, and, and that doesn't go in vain, as in the Lord sees that and He, and he honours that. And so um, I'm just going to read this short verse that the Lord gave me in Nahum verse 7, but I'm just going to read it from the Amplified Version. It's just a short tip. It says, The Lord is good, a strength and str- stronghold in the day of trouble. He knows, and in brackets, He recognizes, cares for, and understands fully who take refuge and trust in Him. So this morning, I just encourage you as you give that you know, it's a little seed into this house, into the, into the home that we come every Sunday. And, um, and where we are, we're, we're, we're bringing our children, we're bringing, we're bringing um, it's a life-giving home. And, and that's what we're sowing into. So as we bow our heads, I just um, pray and, and we'll give it and we'll take up the offering. Um, Heavenly Father, we just thank you this morning and I thank you, God, for For you always come through in the times that we need you, Lord. And you are such a good God. And we just thank you. And as we give this morning, I pray for each and every person here, Lord, that you will just meet them where they're at and that they will go, Lord, encouraged and and that this testimony will be an encouragement for them, Lord, that they are never alone. And whenever they do feel that um, things are out of control or they can't handle anything, Lord, that they will know that you are the sustainer and that you are their provider. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And I will draw
I need to pray. Can I pray? I kind of feel like I want to stay a little bit longer. (laughs) Now I've got to speak and I have to get my head into gear. I'm shaking. Hallelujah. There's nothing like your presence, Holy Spirit. There is nothing like your presence, Holy Spirit. There's nothing like your presence. And we say, come, come, Holy Spirit. We thank you that you're here and that you inhabit the praises of your people. And I thank you for this time of worship and adoration and exaltation and ministry unto you and that you so generously minister to us. And we just worship you, Lord. We just worship you. I thank you for this word that you've put in my heart. Look, I I can't do it without you and your Holy Spirit leading me and your anointing. I can't do it without your Holy Spirit. So I thank you for clarity this morning. I thank you that we have ears to hear and eyes to see what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. And I thank you for revelation. I thank you for the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of who you are that the eyes of our understanding would be enlightened this morning as we receive and we partake of the word of God. Let it not be Beck's word, but it be your truth, Holy Spirit. Use my lips to bring it forth in Jesus' mighty name. I'm going to do my best because I just want to stay a little bit longer in his presence. But his presence is in the word too. And um, two weeks ago, I brought a word on why worship. This is part two of why worship. And um, oh, hallelujah. We looked at why. Why worship? Why do we do what we do? Why do we sing? Why do we sing songs to the Lord? Why do we come on Sunday? Why worship? And the Lord spoke to my heart, which I briefly shared with you, is that we worship to discover his wonder. And we need to remember our why. Because in remembering our why, we'll remember our who. And if we remember our who, we remember our purpose on our journey of walking it out as believers. I'm seeing star jumps up there. That looks really funny. And so remembering our who, we remember our... um, that in discovering the wonder of God, we discover his worth. Revelation 4 was where we we had a look at this. And in discovering his worth in the throne room of heaven, worship flows. So remember why, remember who, remember his worth, and you'll flow in worship. And we looked at Abraham and his journey with Isaac and how the Lord spoke to him to bring Isaac as an offering before him. And we looked at his journey as a worshipper and that he knew his why because he knew his God. And he was able to offer Isaac knowing that God was faithful and knowing that God would um, bring a provision and that knowing God is who he says he is and that the prophecy that he, that he gave, the word that he gave to Abraham when he said, look up, that Isaac was a part of that. And so he didn't walk his journey in fear, but he walked it in trust knowing God is faithful. And so he knew his why and was able to say, let's go and worship. And we saw the platform in which he worshipped, Mount Moriah being a rocky, rugged place, not about singing and dancing and microphones and lights and CDs and everything. It was a place of him and the Lord. His life was his altar, his platform of worship in which he was able to offer and bow before the Lord, which we looked at in Psalm 99, meaning come with submissive wonder. We worship, we bow low with submissive wonder. And in offering our praise and our worship, this brings glory and honour to him. Uh, Last week, I just wanted to touch on what happened to me last week because I had some are you okay back messages. That was not an emotional breakdown, please, just so you know. I I was okay, I was really good. And um, the Lord challenged me with that song we were just singing, which... um, I wrote and I had been singing it in my home and it had been my heart's cry. But I'd actually finished the worship set and um, 
I could feel the presence of the Lord very much upon me. But I looked at mum and she was a bit um, drunk too. And she said, keep going. And I started singing it in again. And I was looking at the words up the back there. And Holy Spirit said to me, what are you singing? Do you really mean what you're singing? And I'm like, well, I hope so. Because I wrote a song and I've been singing it to you all week. And he said, but do you really mean it? Are you really prepared for me to come and move and minister in a way that will mess you up? And you may not look so pretty up here. You might not look so glamorous when I show up. And I felt this weight come on me that I can't even put into words other than the only words I could say was weighty glory. And I had enough time to look at Rach and say, please sing. And as soon as I said that to Rach, I couldn't hold myself anymore. The presence of the Lord came upon me so strong that it's like the floor disappeared and he just smothered me and I couldn't move. I could hear mum. I was able to listen to her wonderful word, but I couldn't move. And it's like I tapped into the river because the river was coming out my eyes and nose and mouth and in not a glamorous way, but he just said, do you really mean what your heart is crying out for? Are we really prepared for the glory of the Lord to manifest in such a way, not just here, but I can do that at home quite comfortably and be okay with tears and snot flying everywhere, but to be in his presence with other people and have the Lord minister, do we really mean what we cry out for when we, when we sing these songs? And so the Lord just began to challenge me again this week as I looked at this message of why worship. And there's so many avenues I could go. Like I almost became overwhelmed with it. I'm like, Lord, you've given me some direction, but there's so many stories. There are so many scriptures. I need some direction. And he said, sacrificial praise. Sacrificial praise. What does sacrificial praise and thanksgiving look, at, look like? And he, he showed me, just reminded me that in Old Testament worship, the sacrifice was always a part of the priest's um, order of going into the presence of the Lord. Now we know that as New Covenant believers that doesn't apply to us. We don't have to get our animals and slaughter them and we can all come boldly before the throne of grace because of what Jesus did. Amen? That there's not those requirements and rituals put in place that are, are so graphic and gory and um, that only one person gets to go and enjoy it but at least yeah, our sins have been washed away. No, all our sins have been washed away and we can now all boldly come before the throne of grace 24-7 that I am the temple of the Holy Spirit that his presence lives and dwells in me so therefore why do I need to bring a sacrifice of praise if the perfect sacrifice has already been made once for all Jesus what are we looking at when we are to bring a sacrifice what is that sacrifice Holy Spirit and he took me to Hebrews 13:15. Micaiah James. Thank you, hon. Hebrews 13, 15. It says, Therefore by him, by Jesus, let us continually, say that, continually, continually offer the sacrifice of praise to God that is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. I'll read it again. Therefore, by him, by Jesus, let us continually offer the sacrifice of praise to God that is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. Now, the word sacrifice is pretty self-explanatory. It means to kill or to slaughter. Again, not a pretty word, but it's saying here to continually offer the sacrifice of praise. So what does that look like? How do I offer this to the Lord continually in my life? Remember, when we're talking about praise and worship, we're not just referring to this Sunday thing, as I mentioned last time. Your life is your platform of worship. So how do I bring my sacrifice before the Lord? Well, Apostle Paul shows us in Romans 8, 13, For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to deeds the the Sorry, you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. Again, for if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. 
Galatians 5.16, this is the Amplified Version, says, but I say, walk habitually, meaning make it a habit. Make it a habit to walk in the Holy Spirit. Seek Him, be responsive to His guidance, then you will certainly not carry out the desire of sinful nature, which responds impulsively without regard for God and His presence. So if I'm to bring a sacrifice continually before the Lord, what am I sacrificing? What am I killing? What am I slaughtering here? My flesh. Me. I'm bringing me before the altar. And I'm putting down the things in me. Yes, I'm born again. My spirit is seated in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. I'm a new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have been made new. His presence is in me. But I still have to outwork things with this mind and I still have to outwork things in this fleshly body. So therefore, I need to continually come before him with a sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving because those things are the things that hinder our walk with him and the presence that we experience with him in our life. Amen. Does that make sense? Sorry, my pages are all mixed up here. Psalm 116, 17 says, I will offer to you the sacrifice of thanksgiving and I will call upon the name of the Lord. Psalm 116, I will offer to you the sacrifice of thanksgiving, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. In Psalm 27, 16, And now shall my head be lifted up above my enemies round about me. Therefore I will offer in this tabernacle sacrifices of joy. I will sing, yes, I will sing praises unto the Lord. Sacrifices, sacrifices. It's sacrificial because we're doing away with this thing. We're doing away with what's in here. And who has had some battles in in this this week? Can we be really real in here? Okay, who maybe has some battles with the flesh at the moment? I'll put my hand up. This is what we're doing away with. And this is what the Lord's requiring that we get really real about. It's easy to come on Sunday morning and put our face on, isn't it? And play masquerade. He sees straight through it. It's easy to wake up in the morning and, you know, be real at home and go, I don't feel like it, at least no one can see me today. But his eye is on us. And when he's searching for true worshippers who worship in spirit and in truth, this is what he's searching. Will you sacrificially offer yourself to me today? Will you sacrificially offer yourself to me today? Will you give me your all? Will you lay you down, Rebecca? Will you offer me that attitude today? Will you offer me those negative emotions today? Will you offer and slaughter and do away with that fear that I can see? Will you do away with the, um, the offense that's built up in your heart? Will you put it aside and when you come with a song of praise and thanksgiving? Because when you offer me praise, you're going to suddenly go from a place of feeling very human where a supernatural exchange takes place. And suddenly, the eyes of your understanding are being enlightened. That's why we have to do it. Because it's so easy to go on with fleshly things. And be, I mean, I don't think our world has ever been so emotional than what it is at the moment. Don't you believe in the past two years, everyone's um, emotions are so extreme? The sensitivity of people and the offense and the, the... criticism and the negative vibe that we get from people in church and out of church is just this emotional explosion ready to happen and I believe the Lord's saying I don't want that in my people because I have things to do you have things to do and there's my presence that is in you and if you want to come a little bit closer and you want to go a little bit deeper and worship a little bit louder then that can't come It's time to sacrifice. It's time to slaughter that thing. It's time to kill it. Leave it out. Leave it out. You can come into the presence of the Lord free because I, Jesus, have paid that for you. So why bring it? 
pure worship is when we can completely surrender that. And I'm preaching to me here, okay? I'm preaching to myself here. This has been such a reflection for me this week. Amen, amen. Praise and worship. When the Lord spoke this to me, I just, whoa. Praise and worship is a faith connection into heavenly realms. It's a supernatural exchange from things of the flesh to things of the spirit. That is why we need to bring an offering of praise and thanksgiving continually. Now, some days you might feel like, oh, I don't need to offer a um, sacrifice today. I'm all good. That's okay. But something can come very quickly. And so it's maintaining that posture of awareness because the little things that sometimes we don't even know, the Holy Spirit will only reveal when we draw near. We can have these sort of frustrations or these, ah, I don't know, I get this internal annoyance that ah, I don't know what it is. I can't put my finger on it. So, right, I need to praise the Lord. I need him to highlight what this is in me or if it's something within our home so I can bring it to the altar. Leave it there. Dig deep. Draw that little bit nearer. Go that little bit closer. And then it's like there's, it, it is an exchange. You feel it change. I can't even fully describe it because it's a supernatural thing that happens. But we can get lazy with it. And this week, the Lord challenged me, said, okay, I want you to every day, when you're starting your day, have a praise party. Now, that sounds easy, you know, for some people. It's, oh, I love to put on music and have a dance. But the Lord really said intentionally, not just because it's what you do. And, you know, guaranteed every time I was interrupted in some form. The funniest being, um, I'm, I'm having a great time. Mom, uh, there's a situation out in the kitchen. I'm like, oh, What situation? <laughs> Um, The dog vomited all over the kitchen floor. That'll take you right from glory down to to earth. That dog's never allowed inside, and this one time he's inside. So there are going to be distractions. But the Lord says, offer to me sacrifice and praise. Praise is what we bring, and worship is what's released when we enter into his presence. Amen. So what is praise? Let's look at that. Now, I could have... Stayed in Psalms forever. There are so many, so many wonderful scriptures in Psalms. But Psalm 92 says, praise is a good thing. It is good to give praise. It is good to bring praise to the Lord. Praise from the upright is beautiful. In Psalm 147, it says, it is good, it is pleasant, and it is beautiful. So praise is good, it is pleasant, and it is beautiful. Then in Psalm 47, 7, it says to sing praise with understanding. And I guess the question I'd love to ask you all, it might just be a refresher for some of us, I know it's it's been a real refresher for me, is what does praise look like to you? And what you, um, what would you call praise? Some people would say, oh, it's an upbeat, happy, clappy song. But what is praise? And I want to look at the seven biblical, because I don't want you to all walk away and go, oh, Beck loves to praise the Lord, and this is what she says about praise. I want it to be all from here, okay? I have expressions I love to bring, but they're biblical expressions. Now, I actually had this on my phone to put up here, and I apologize, we couldn't get it over I'm not a computer person and John's not here to help us today. So if you are taking notes, I'll help you. Um, But yeah, just bear with me because I was really hoping you could see it um, given that it's Hebrew words. But we have seven expressions of worship. The first one is toda. We get this from Psalm 149. Now this is communal sacrificial praise. And when it's talking about community, it's community praise. It's corporate praise and worship. And it's a faith-filled praise that you bring before the Lord that is full of faith even before you see a victory. So this is why it's important to come with understanding rather than just go through the motion of singing, this is what we do. It's going, no, I'm bringing my 
faith feel praised? Psalm um, 149. I won't go through every scripture because there are a lot. And I'm going to offer it to you even before I see the victory. And I'm going to do it with my brothers and sisters in the room because your faith ignites my faith. Your praise energizes and encourages my praise. That is why we need to gather. And it's not just in Psalms, into the New Testament. Um, Thessalonians and, and Galatians and Ephesians, he speaks about singing together with Psalms, hymns and spiritual songs. Together. It's not meant to be an isolated experience. And so this total communal sacrificial praise is a faith-filled corporate praise that we bring before the Lord, even before we see victory. And you praise him for victory, you thank him for victory, and you walk out knowing you have victory. Amen? The next is halal, which we get the word hallelujah from. Halal. This is a boasting, loud, vibrant, expressive, foolish, celebratory praise and thanksgiving. Let's quickly look at Psalm 36, 18. If you want to turn there with me. Halal. Oh, it's not Psalm 30. There is no 18. I've put the wrong number in. I think it was Psalm 100, that's what I really had. Oh, Psalm 111, I will praise the Lord with my whole heart in the assembly of the upright and in the congregation. I will praise the Lord with my whole heart and then you could go on into Psalm 100, Psalm 101. That's all halal praise. I will praise the Lord with my whole heart, with all that is within me, with my entire being. I will celebrate and I will bring praise. Halal. It's explosive. It's energetic. Barak praise is to bless. It's the posture of blessing the Lord. Psalm 103, I will bless the Lord. All that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. That's Barak, blessing, praise, Barak. The next one is Yada, or Yada, meaning thanksgiving. It's with your hands extended in surrender and adoration. So when we bring thanksgiving, and I offer my thanksgiving, I am Yada before the Lord. Psalm 134, which says, Behold, bless the Lord, all you servants of the Lord. So all of us, not just some of us, who by night stand in the house of the Lord. Again, it's talking about gathering a lot of this congregational worship. I bless in Barak and I yada with my hands. Wave offerings. It's very scriptural to lift your hands in church. Very scriptural, and that's in Thessalonians as well. It says, rejoice in the Lord, and in all things give thanks. It's not just saying thank you, Jesus. It's an actual act with your hands and with your body to bring thanksgiving before the Lord. This is me going, oh, no, I don't feel very thankful today, or maybe unanswered prayer. Or It's going, no, I'm going to Yada. I'm going to come before the Lord with thanksgiving this morning and I'm going to show him that I acknowledge who he is and his goodness and what he's done for me and I know he's faithful and I may not have received the answer prayer yet but I yada before you, Lord, and I offer thanksgiving. Watch what happens in your life. Watch what happens to your flow of entering in, into the presence of God. The next is Shabbat. And that's joyful shouts of praise to the Lord. Shabbat, Psalm 100. And there are dozens and dozens and dozens and dozens of scriptures where you will see these words. So I encourage you to go and read some Psalms. But Shabbat with joyful shouts is make a joyful shout to the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. 
Come before his presence with singing. Know that the Lord, he is God. It's a shout of joy. It's a shout of victory. It's a shout of triumph. Is anyone getting the theme that we're not meant to be quiet praises? There's something wrong with us. If we're quiet before the Lord in our offering of sacrificial praise and thanksgiving, we're missing something. The next is to healer. That's singing, specifically vocal singing as choir or as individual. Psalm 96 verse 1, just over the page. Oh, sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord and bless his name. The next, the final is zamar. That's instrumental worship. I bring my instrument and I offer a sacrifice of praise through music, Psalm 150, if you're taking notes. This is great to teach your kids. I'm so thankful. I did a course when I was um, 13 called Psalmody, where Dad, on a Sunday night, did this with our church down in Jervis Bay. I was 13, and I just I gobbled it all up. And it gave me, at a very young, young age, the understanding of what I was doing when I was praising the Lord. And then we found the kids program and we taught it to all the, the kids down there and something we did many times where they learn about Toda and Halal and Barak and they have names, like I think it was Benny Barak. And so they have little characters and they identified and it has stuck with me. I couldn't find my notes, so I've had to re-go and discover, but it's powerful. It'll change the way you praise and worship because it's revelation. There's, it's different to just coming and going through routine where it can get a little bit repetitive. Oh, we did this song last week. Oh, the, yeah. It's the same team on again. You know, if we come with a different attitude, oh, I'm bringing my praise and my thanksgiving. Oh, I don't like my week this week. It's been a little bit depressing. But God is good. Praise is good. And I'm going to offer it because I know he's calling me into deeper things. And so I can't bring those things with me anymore. I've got to sacrifice them. It's a completely different mentality than just going through the motions of putting on a happy clappy song when you actually come in with purpose and understanding and revelation to go, I need to shout to the Lord today. And that's in the Bible. I'm allowed to. (laughs) You know, it's powerful. So Zamar was the last one, instrumental Praise, and I loved this, and I'm not a scientist, but um, I did a little bit of, I remembered a study I saw on praying in tongues a few years ago, and I don't know what show it was on, and it showed what was happening in the brain when people prayed in tongues. So I began to look at the expressions of praise and worship and thought, has anyone done a study on praise and worship scientifically? Because God is a God of science. So what's happening in my body? What's happening in my brain when I praise? Because I know I can feel a change in my body at times, but I'd love to scientifically be able to see. Well, there are some, and I I don't want to go into that because I'm not a scientist and I don't feel I'm the best person. But a few things that I did go and have um, a look at was, um, first one, clapping. Clapping. Now, there are so many scriptures in Psalms that talk about clapping. Now, clapping originated when a king was enthroned, and apparently it was palms only. Clap with your palms as a, um, a celebration of, <laughs> you know, have a go, it's fun. Or just one finger. It's evolved over the years. And, but it was something when a king was enthroned, everyone would applaud in recognition of kingship. So isn't it interesting that we're encouraged to come before the king of kings with an applause? I love that. So clapping is an effective medicine for the person who suffers from digestive disorder, bowel issues, heartburn, arthritis is a common problem with elderly people, but can easily be cured by clapping. Do you want to come up? <laughs> clapping hands is a very useful measure for those suffering from low blood pressure. If someone has suffered with heart and lung-related disease, clapping plays an important role in helping cure. It boosts your immunity and causes and strengthens white blood cells in your body. 
These protect your body from illness. So keep clapping and stay healthy. But how about clapping to the Lord? So we're going to clap to the Lord because I want you to feel there's cells in our hands that relieve life to organs. And it's done. There are so many studies. Go have a look. And even um, some Chinese and Japanese, like we're talking generational things, they will clap. Now, I know people go, don't go down the new agey path, but where do you think it all originated from? Who created our hands? Who created the cells and the nerves where the blood flows, the white cells that help boost immunity? Who created that? So when the Bible tells me, clap unto the Lord, I think it's a good idea to clap. Let's do some clapping. Because I want you to just be free to clap. Hallelujah. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. I tell you what, you know, clapping is, clapping is part of my warfare. When, when the enemy comes, and particularly with my boys, I don't know, something happens in me and I clap. And I, I never really thought about it till this week because I'd be praying and clapping. And, I, and now I know, wow, there's a lot happening in that. The other one is dancing. I'm not going to get you, don't worry, I'm not going to do that to you. But dancing, I've got two sermons here, that's why I'm confused. This is last week's sermon, here it is. Dancing releases joy and is being proved to help prevent depression. I watched these shimmy mob dances at the... um, at um, the marina yesterday, just a group of women, they're called the shimmy mob. And they're having the time of their lives shimmering, having everyone watch them. And I thought, good on them, you know, because even though it may not be their worship unto the Lord the way we know dance to be worship unto the Lord, but it's doing something in them that's really healthy. Dance before the Lord. It's very scriptural. Let's not get so serious about life that we forget to be childlike in our faith. If you feel to twirl, twirl for Jesus. Fizzy for Jesus, that. Amen. So dancing release, it releases joy. Shouting releases endorphins and reduces stress. There are places you can go in the world for shout therapy. I know it sounds funny, but I think people have a bit of an idea through their science, which is God's science, that some things in the body, healthy things are taking place. And the Bible is encouraging us to do it. And if you can give me a reason why we shouldn't, I'd love to hear it because I can't find one. It's not in there. It says to bring a shout of praise. It says to shout to the Lord with a voice of triumph. It's a victory thing to know who you belong to. And, I mean, look at the the stories we read with shouting in the Bible and the miracles that took place. It's powerful. This was one study that was done in the university in Miami, and I loved this so much. They did a study in, in church over a period of time with the health benefits of those who regularly engage in praise and worship corporately. Amazingly, it was found that as people sang together in worship, as a choir, for example, or us in unison, as um, there were beneficial effects to the heart and that their heartbeats actually synchronise. In other words, their hearts beat as one. Isn't that beautiful? that you can sing your song on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and I can sing my song, and we'll all probably arrive and our heartbeats are in different places, but when we come together and there's the rhythm of the drums and the music's playing and we're offering our thanksgiving and our praise to the Lord, that our hearts begin to synchronise in unison. 
What's the heartbeat of God? Unity. Isn't that beautiful? When did the Holy Spirit begin to move on earth in the upper room? When they were what? In one accord. We want God to move. We need to not miss out on this. We need to come to the house of the Lord. We need to offer worship together. We need to be beating with the heartbeat of heaven, the heartbeat of our Father. Amen. This is your platform of praise and worship. Romans 12 in the Message Bible. Makai, I don't know if you have the Message Bible on that one. So here's what I want you to do, Romans 12, 1. Here's what I want you to do, God helping you. Take your everyday, ordinary life. You're sleeping, you're eating, you're going to work, walking around life and place it to God as an offering. It's about to Hebrews 13, 15 where we started. This is our very first scripture I opened with. Therefore, by him, let us continually offer the sacrifice of praise to God, that is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. But do not forget to do good, to share, then this part, for with such sacrifices, God is well pleased. So why praise? Why worship? Because it pleases God. It blesses you, but it pleases Him. So why would we not want to bring our praise and our worship when I know it pleases Him? Amen? Who wants to please Him? So we remember our why. Our why is our who. When we remember our who, we discover his wonder. When we discover his wonder, we rediscover his worth. And we rediscover his worth. Worship begins to flow out. And knowing that my everyday coming and going, getting up, doing life, primarily I'm a mum. You know, don't always look glamorous and feel glamorous and can be a bit on repeat but that's my platform of worship. And the Lord challenges me, challenges me with that, particularly with homeschooling. <laughs> I can get lazy with it. Like, am I bringing my best for my boys? But ultimately, this is my act of worship for you, Lord, that in everything you've entrusted to me, and he gave me a song, and I call it my um, David in the field song because I was folding underwear on the bed, just folding it. And I began to sing... And everything I do, Lord, everything I do. Piles of socks, spirit and in truth, Lord, I worship you. And I'm crying, folding washing. And everything I do, Lord, and everything I do. Do it all for you, Lord, I worship you. It's my platform of worship. Where's your platform of worship? And how do we daily bring a sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving? Because Sunday should be an explosive gathering because of what we've had in the week with him. And this is overflow. And my faith connects with your faith. And my praise is encouraged by your praise. And our hearts are beating as one. Amen. So we're going to praise the Lord a little bit. So let's stand.
Sound. 